during 2019 and 2022, you could not log on to Instagram and not see these beautiful dancing models adorned in modern African outfits. They were all over our feeds. Although the founder, Christel Nyangu, was hardly seen in any of these videos, she was the mastermind behind this viral moment and opted for a backseat strategy role. But that backseat role would soon change for Christelle when she was unknowingly kicked out of the same company she launched to 20 million pounds with only 50 pounds to her name, prompting her to create this video that shocked the world. This is the underdog story of Grassfields and of how a Cameroonian immigrant, Crystal Nyango, built a successful online fashion brand with her twin sister, only to lose it all in a shocking betrayal. Crystal Nyangu was born in Yaoundé, Cameroon in September of 1988 and was the first to emerge of a set of twins. Her father was a businessman and her mother was a company secretary. This combined income afforded the family of seven to live a comfortable life and were respected in their community. But this would all come to a halt when their father suddenly died of a stroke. A young Crystal would start seeing less and less of her mom as she was walking round the clock to provide for the family after their father's demise. As a result, her elder brother had to step in to take care and manage the household in their mother's absence. Sadly, this would also change when he suddenly fell ill and got diagnosed with cancer. Crystal's mom sold everything she had and even went into debt to save him, but couldn't afford all the operations he needed, so they lost him too only two years after they lost their dad. At this point, Crystal's mom was heavily in debt, whilst also being the sole provider of the remaining six children, as well as cousins and relatives that were living with them. The kids stepped in to help by hawking foods on the streets during the evenings after school, and also by using their weekends to help their mom sell groceries at the local market. To further help their mom, Crystal and her twin sister Michelle started thinking of creative ways to contribute. They came up with the idea of taking popular sweets from their mom's grocery store that were not available at their school canteen and selling them to the kids. This venture proved successful. However, on the other hand, their study started to suffer due to the instability at home. This weighed heavily on their mom as she wanted them to focus on their studies rather than constantly thinking of how to help her. With this in mind, she made the decision to send Christelle and Michelle to boarding school. Even though Christelle did not want to leave her close-knit family and go to boarding school, she made the best out of it when she got there. She and her twin sister Michelle worked hard to gain scholarships so they could relieve some of the financial burden from their mom. Thankfully, during this time, their uncle, who is their mom's brother, traveled to the UK and occasionally sent money to help out. This enabled them to focus and graduate on the top 10 of their class in secondary school. But as they await their results to get ready for university, their mom broke the news to them. As their chosen university was in another town, accommodation, food, textbooks, clothing, and other household expenses would need to be catered for. And besides school fees, she couldn't afford any of it. Christelle and Michelle got to work again. They spent the entire summer working low-paying jobs and internships. Then after these jobs, they would head over to their mom's shop to sell groceries. This helped them save up to 50% of what they needed. And then their uncle in the UK helped them top up the remaining. But as soon as they started university, they realized they needed more money than they actually pulled together. They spent most of that money on photocopies of schoolwork, which they soon discovered were very costly. They had no choice but to depend on borrowing notes from other students, which was also very inconvenient, especially when exams were near. They barely managed to eat one meal a day with the little money they had, and they often had to plead with other students for their leftovers. They knew that life at university would be hard, but they never expected it to be this harsh. They missed their mom and their family. They had exams to prepare for. They had no workbooks to study from. They survived on less than a meal a day, and they had no friends because they were embarrassed to ask them for food all the time. 
they felt like outcasts. Christelle and Michelle needed money urgently to survive in university, so they decided to sell clothes to students who wanted fashionable and unique outfits. They had little capital, so they had to travel to different towns to buy clothes from wholesalers. They were scared of leaving the campus as they were not used to big towns. They also risked losing everything if the clothes didn't sell. Christelle would take a bus at 4 a.m. to the nearest town and searched through the piles of clothes for hours to find four dresses that she thought would appeal to the girls on campus, while Michelle, on the other hand, would wash, iron, and package them. They tried to sell them to the girls they knew, but they faced a lot of bargaining and delayed payments. They were desperate, so they went to another block of hostels where they didn't know anyone. They felt out of place there, but they gathered their courage and knocked on the first door. The girl who opened the door was their first customer and bought a dress for 10 times the price they paid for it. She also asked them to contact her when they had more stock. They were overjoyed. In the space of a week, they had turned 10 pounds into 150 pounds. The twins were so in demand that sometimes they would receive passion advance from students before they even purchased the products. One weekend, Christelle traveled to Boa, a city on the eastern slopes of Mount Cameroon, to pick up their graduation certificates when she saw a flyer promoting the opportunity to study in the United Kingdom. It said that for £5,000, you could travel to London to get a master's degree. She and her sister had some savings from selling clothes in school, but not enough. They convinced their mom to borrow from the community women, but they still needed a thousand pounds more. They looked for jobs and other ways to raise the money. One day, they met a wealthy lady who liked their style and asked them to style her. Through her, they also met other rich women who wanted their services. They did this for three months and other odd jobs, and they finally raised the £5,000 for Christelle. Her uncle in the UK then offered to pay for her plane ticket. Christelle felt a mix of excitement and fear on the day of her flight to the UK. She had a lot of dreams, but also a lot of worries. How would she pay back the loan her mom took for her? How would she cope without her twin sister, Michelle, who had been her constant companion since birth? She hugged Michelle tightly and promised to work hard and bring her over soon. Then she boarded the plane, which was a terrifying experience for her. She cried when she landed, overwhelmed by the realization that she has made it to the UK. Her uncle welcomed her at the airport and drove her to his home in Nottingham, where she stayed for two weeks before school started. She was amazed by the differences between her life in Yaoundé and the UK. Everything was bright, orderly, and systematic. She learned something new every day, from the punctuality of the postman and the bosses to the convenience of online shopping and banking. She shared her discoveries with Michelle on the phone, who encouraged her to embrace the opportunities and overcome the challenges. Her uncle took her to London to visit the school, enroll and find accommodation. He showed her how to use public transport, which was another source of anxiety for her. London was a big and busy city, full of people from different backgrounds and cultures. She felt lost and out of place, but also curious and hopeful. She was determined to succeed in this new environment for herself and Michelle. True to this promise, she applied for jobs on Gumtree, but hardly got any replies. Then she saw an advert for a work-from-home job that paid over a thousand pounds a month and required no experience. She applied and got a call within an hour. She met with the lady who convinced her to join a multi-level marketing business and sell forever living products. She paid money for the products and traveled to a seminar outside London. She soon realized her mistake when she couldn't sell anything. She was shy, had poor English, and no contacts in the UK. She became desperate and decided to wake up at 3 a.m. every day to apply for jobs as soon as they were posted. She took a long bus ride from Leighton to London Bridge to attend school and studied on the way. During her breaks, she walked around fashion stores and applied for jobs there. But they ignored her and threw away her applications. She felt unwanted and stopped applying in person. 
Her efforts finally paid off when she got a reply from Gumtree for a waitressing job. But the travel time was not worth the effort as it was a four-hour journey to and fro. She then got a cleaning job through a school friend who knew a cleaning manager. The manager was impressed with her work and referred her to another manager who needed a cleaner for a new building. She showed up at 4 a.m., more than two hours early, and started cleaning the three-story building with a large reception area. She cleaned everything. By the end of the week, he promoted her to manager for that building and two others. She earned double what her colleagues did per hour. Life was now looking a bit rosy for Christelle. One weekend, she visited her uncle and his family for the holidays in Nottingham and saw him selling products on eBay. He was packing items to take to the post office. She had never heard of eBay before and was curious. On her way back to London, she explored eBay and was amazed by the variety of things for sale. You could buy clothes, you could buy shoes, hair products and more for a very low price. She became an eBay addict and bought more clothes for school than the few she brought from Cameroon. It didn't take long for Christelle to realize that she could start selling on eBay as well. So after her cleaning jobs over the weekends, she would go to TK Maxx in search of clothes at bargain prices that she could sell for a profit on eBay. She was super excited about the idea of having her little business on eBay, considering it could operate for 24 hours, needed low investment, and her earnings wouldn't be tied to the number of hours she could work. Sales were very slow at first but she soon realized how to write better product descriptions as well as keyword optimization, which both drastically increased her sales. With this business and three jobs, Crystal saved up enough money to help Michelle start her visa process so she too could move to the UK. Unfortunately, Michelle was rejected three times. After the last try, she had spent so much money and decided to request the school fee she has paid to be refunded but the school refused. Because of the school fees she lost and the cost of applying three times, by the time her one-year course was over, she had no savings left and her student visa was about to expire. She had to find a proper job and apply for a work permit urgently. Christelle tried really hard to find a professional job that qualified for a visa, but it was harder than finding casual jobs. She was frustrated and stressed as her visa was expiring and she had to go back to Cameroon. She felt she had failed to achieve her goals of bringing her sister over, paying back her mom's debt and staying in the UK. She felt she had wasted a year and her mom's money. She cried with Michelle on the phone, and then afterwards, they made a plan to buy some products to sell in Cameroon. She then ordered samples from a Chinese wholesaler. By the time she boarded the plane back to Cameroon, she only had 50 pounds left to her name. On the flight, she kept wondering what she could have done differently. She had spent 18 months in the UK, but she felt like she had wasted her time. As the plane approached Yawunde Airport, she wondered if she was making a mistake by returning to Cameroon. Her family greeted her warmly at the airport, but she sensed their disappointment and sadness. On their way home, the car broke down in the dark and they had to wait for hours until dawn. She finally reached her home, which was in a poor condition. The roof was leaking, the bills were overdue, and her younger siblings had dropped out of school. There and then, she decided to stop feeling sorry for herself and look for a way to improve their situation. She told her sister Michelle about something she observed in the UK. There were no dedicated stores selling African print as they had at the local market in Cameroon. There was a gap for African print clothing, which they could fulfill by selling from Cameroon online. Michelle agreed to it with her, but their mother was not supportive. She wanted Christelle to pursue a professional career instead, but Christelle knew that would take too long to make a difference. So she opted to work on selling on eBay, but her hopes were dashed when they learned that eBay did not operate in Cameroon and other African countries due to its high risk status. She felt depressed for days, unsure of what to do next. Then she saw a Facebook post from a Kenyan brand that sold to customers abroad. She clicked on their link and discovered Etsy, an online marketplace that worked in Africa. 
she was overjoyed and shared the news with her twin and business partner, Michelle. They had a chance to start their business again. However, they faced another challenge. Cameroon did not have an online banking or card system, so they had to rely on her former roommate in the UK to collect the money for them and then send it manually to Cameroon. Thankfully, her roommate agreed to help. They used the £50 that she had brought back from London to buy fabric and find a tailor. They modeled the products themselves using the makeup products she had brought from a drugstore from London. They opened a Facebook page for their brand, Grassfields, on January 11, 2013. They posted consistently on Facebook, traveling to the cyber cafe in the next town every day because they lacked internet and electricity. It was hard work, but it paid off slowly. One day, Christelle decided to take a leap of faith. She had been observing some large pages that posted Afrocentric images and noticed how much engagement they got. She knew that if they could post their images on those, on those pages, they would get a boost in sales. But they charged a lot for those ads for that marketing, which her twin Michelle was reluctant to spend. She understood Michelle's fears, but she also studied the patterns of the successful posts on those pages. She was confident that they could sell out and make money with some of the content packs that she wanted to use. She took the risk and paid for the post behind Michelle's back. That evening, Michelle woke her off from a nap. She thought there was something wrong with their Etsy account as they had received so many emails and orders. Michelle thought it was a glitch, but Christelle told her what she had done. They were stunned because they had generated about £150,000 in sales. They had never seen money like that before. It was so much money that her UK roommate's bank account threatened to shut down her account because of suspicion of fraud. It was hard to believe that their lives had changed in one night. That was the gamble that lifted their entire family out of poverty. She could now help her mom with the house and the bills. She could now send her younger brothers to the UK or to Germany for better opportunities and she could go back to the UK to run the business hands on. Using some of the money, Christelle returned to the UK to expand the business. Michelle will remain back in Cameroon to handle the manufacturing side of the business while she handled the marketing and customer service. To get things up and running, the business had to be on operational for about four months. During that time, they spent most of their profits on her move back, as well as their brother's education in the UK and Germany. They also invested in new stock to improve their customer service and reduce shipping times. However, this left them with little cash, and they had to pay a year's rent in advance without a guarantor. They needed to reopen quickly and resume their sales. Christelle worked on their launch marketing campaign with her own resources and announced the reopening to their loyal customers. On the first day of launch day, they made nearly £40,000 in sales. Sales continued increasing from there, but soon they noticed a drop in engagement on Facebook. Christelle realized that another social media platform, Instagram, was gaining more popularity. They were hesitant at first, but then they decided to create a profile and post their content there. They quickly gained a lot of followers. Around the same time, they changed the name of their business from the African shop to Grassfields, a name that was chosen by their mother to symbolize wealth and abundance. Their sales picked up again, and then they launched their own website to establish Grassfields as a full-fledged brand. They hired professional models and photographers, while Christelle still handled the styling, the creative direction, and the content and the makeup. They encouraged their customers to share pictures of their outfits and tag them, which became one of their biggest viral campaigns. They also created posts that helped customers on ideas on how to style their clothing, as many of them were new to the modern African style. This user-generated content created a new fashion culture and drove more sales. They designed new looks with their followers' feedbacks in mind, and soon they stood out from their competitors with their innovation and grew a loyal fan base. However, as Michelle worked hard to produce the products in Cameroon, they faced 
delays in packaging and shipping them to the UK. This affected their sales and upset some of their customers. Christelle was committed to keeping their customers happy and started exploring the possibility of producing in the UK. She hired tailors in the UK to supplement their team in Cameroon. She then moved to Nottingham for a more affordable space and she was joined by their uncle who supported the operations. Grassfields grew really fast and being became consistent and on top of social media trends, unlike their competitors. They reached a million pounds in sales with just three people running the front end. And Christelle was really good at creating campaigns that increased their sales on their launches. However, they still faced the challenge of meeting the growing demand and investing in production infrastructure. And to top it all off, Michelle fell ill. The others had been on standby for days and their social media followers were surprised that for the first time in years, they were offline. Christelle had to make an announcement that Michelle had fallen sick and that Grassfields was temporarily closed. In the statement, she highlighted that she could no longer juggle the stresses of running a business with the uncertainty of Michelle's health. All Christelle wanted to do at that time was spend time with her sister, who she felt was on her last days. Christelle logged in on social media a few days after the announcement and the support was overwhelming. This was when she realized how big Grassfields was and how they had inspired people across the nation for years. The messages kept pouring in. Amongst these messages was a doctor. He reached out and offered to operate on Michelle, which Michelle agreed to. The operation was a success and prolonged her lifespan, but she still needed some minor operations in the future. Christelle then returned to the UK and reopened Grassfields, which had lost over two months of revenue at this point. The company was cash strapped. They needed cash and a business partner fast, but most of the people they met only wanted to invest financially. They wanted someone who could be hands-on and provide support. They had several meetings before they finally met the person they were looking for, Mr. Ravi. Ravi was a young investor eager to join Grassfields. He had done extensive research on the brand and on Michelle's condition. He said he understood their challenges and could help them expand their production in Africa and fix their stock issues. He would take over the operations and they could focus on marketing and sales. Quickly, he became a partner and shareholder. But according to Christelle, she soon realized that he was chaotic and absent. This slowed down their business and tarnished their reputation even further. Christelle then confronted him and demanded changes. He agreed to make changes and listed some steps. One of the steps included sending a full-time team member and an IT expert to help them. According to Christelle, the helper he sent was more of a chaperone and a spy to get access to her computer so he could lock her out of the company's social media accounts and email marketing platforms. He gave Christelle a document to sign urgently. According to her, she did so without reading, and unbeknown to her, it was a back statement document signing away the IP right to the company's greatest assets that is their social media platforms, which was almost at a million followers by then, and then their email marketing platforms, which had over 300,000 subscribers. Realizing what she had done, this was when Christelle uploaded the video that sent shocking waves on the internet. Then the company countered the video with this statement. According to Christelle, her business partner had transferred all the assets of Grassfields Limited to a new company that he owned and controlled, leaving her with an empty shell and a pile of debts. He also denied her the shares and directorship that she deserved in the new company and only offered her a 5% stake, which she denied. So after almost 10 years to that day, Christelle walked away from the same company she launched to 20 million pounds with only 50 pounds to her name.
Taking away the lessons she learned from this journey, a few months later, Christelle launched an educational platform where she currently shares strategies for digital e-commerce brands. This is because digital businesses are the new oil well. So if you want to discover the five most lucrative digital businesses in Africa to launch to success like Christelle, then click on the video on the screen. Also on my blog, I'll share lessons that we can all learn from this story, as well as if you want to know how I came about creating this video, you can find that on my blog. And as for Grassfields, the brand, it is still in operation under the new management. And even though the models are still dancing, the sparkle is not as bright as it used to be.